All right, piss and vinegar day 24. So if you're wondering where accessory day this week is, I did it, but I forgot to press record. So no accessory day, last day of the week, arm wrestling day. Uh, this is a strange session. I woke up from like a four hour nap. Um, I was really tired and I went to bed and then woke up at like, it's weird when you go to sleep at like two in the afternoon and wake up at six at night super tired so today's session was i just wasn't feeling it and i was feeling weak so i did a bit of experimenting as i am doing quite a bit of during this cut but i i was originally just going to keep my arm wrestling days exactly the same because i was still progressively overloading on everything but um i decided today i'd experiment with, with stuff to see if i could find any kind of tidbits that might be able to add into my programming so first i got this new handle that i add fat grips on and i thought it'd be good for side pressure that way i could get the hand a bit more involved with my side pressure but turns out because it's it um i don't know how to explain it but the handle is quite got a big circumference over the the original kind of what, what it's attached to so it sort of tilts and it just doesn't feel right so i ended up using the belt again to just do side pressure so that's fine. Uh, might find a different way of doing it. I, pr I could realistically do it with my other handle actually, but for today I just used my normal uh, side pressure karate belt. These things are super, uh, you can use these for so many different things. So 36 kilos, um, really wasn't feeling it. My elbow was really, really toothachy. Like you could see me pausing between the reps, really contemplating whether I wanted to do this or not, but it has to be done. I have to do side pressure because it's all I've got in, 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 on the table. I haven't got the hands. So I'm, de I'm, I'm, uh, I'm uh, tenaciously going to get this concrete elbow that just can't be pushed through. So I did three sets of five. The way I progress this is I go three sets of five one week and then i go five by five the next week and then i progress but today I, I, i've for the two last two weeks i've done three by five because it's, i haven't been able to progress so maybe next session i'll do five by five then i move on to some um fat grip wrist curls i haven't done these before this is a new addition because i just got this new handle and i like these these are easier to standardize than the behind the back wrist curls and i think in arm wrestling too it is advantageous to do unilateral work because obviously when you're on the table it's unilateral movement so one you're stronger in unilateral movements because it's less uh, central nervous system efficiency required um, so you can get more weight done and then two it, it emulates the sport a little bit better so I might just start doing these instead of the behind the back curls I use I did the behind the back curls originally because I was lazy and I didn't want to do unilateral work because it takes more time but now I'm uh, now I'm really full-fledged high intensity I, I'm, I'm, I have no time. I have plenty of uh, willpower to do unilateral work now. So, yeah, I'm going to start doing these instead, I think, because it's easier to standardize the range of motion. Because one of the problems with, with arm wrestling movements is um, you don't always... It's like a squat, right? Like, if, if you start doing a squat ass to grass, and then over time you start doing, like, a half squat, and then you end up doing like a quarter squat and it's like, yeah, I got stronger. No, you didn't get stronger. You just increased the range of motion. And that happens a lot with arm wrestling training too, because it's very, it's relatively new sort of vectors that we've been doing for the last maybe 20, 30 years. Whereas, you know, bodybuilding standardized lifting has been around for 150 years. So the bicep curl, we know the range of motion now, the tricep extension, we know the range of motion, the bench press, we know the range of motion, but with such a small range of motion with the wrist, with a new exercise science uh, sort of niche in arm wrestling, it can be hard to really make sure what range of motion you're doing over and over again. Otherwise, yeah, you get you get you get um, inconsistent progression or sometimes regression because you start using even longer range of motion. So these were good, and they burnt more than the behind the back curls too. So overall, these were a general win. I'm going to start doing these and this is i think this is such an important part of experimenting with your training um you know the idea the thing about training is you can do the same things over and over again and get great results you don't necessarily need to swap out exercises the only thing you get is faster progressions if you swap out exercises 
But what it does do is you learn movements that might be superior to the current movements you're doing. So I, at the moment, as I'm cutting, rather than really really worrying about my progress overload, I'm focusing on trying different movements and figuring out what movements are actually better for me. And this is a great example of that. So this was good. Probably a bit too light though. I think this was 22 kilos. Uh, I feel like probably 25, 30 would be more uh, uh, proficient because I was getting like 15, 20 reps and I typically like to stick between eight to 12 reps. So yeah, but I'll, I'll keep fucking around with this variation and figure out how to do it the most efficiently and most consistently. Efficiency and consistency when it comes to exercise. That's why high intensity is so important because it keeps you efficient and proficient. Uh, yeah, and I just standardize these with drop sets. Um, I do drop sets and and force reps, which is part of why these are so good. Because with unilateral movements, you can, you know, obviously you can help yourself out with some force reps. So with that behind the back wrist curl I was doing, you can't really give yourself a force rep. I mean, I could use leg drive to get forced negatives, but it's just not the same as being able to grab the bar and only give yourself a, just the right amount of tension to get a rep. It's so much more effective than f force negatives or, you know, any other sort of way of doing beyond failure work so you can see <laughs> those are fucking very painful and now i'm getting very very experimental i decided that i do some uh unilateral pronation instead of the uh, bilateral or you know yeah bilateral pronation that i have been doing um and yeah i wanted to just do i wanted to see what it was like to just kind of fuck around and try different kind of vectors and different try, try, kind of movement paths on the tr on the pronation and take these to failure um, because I feel like I don't really get any table time I don't do enough arm wrestling table time so in order to kind of get somewhat close to emulating the table I need to start doing some cable movements with a, and using the, the, the body as a whole rather than isolating the pronator or isolating the flexors etc I need to do some more full body kind of um, uh, compound arm wrestling movements if you will to kind of get my central nervous system efficient at moving all the different moving parts rather than just moving the wrist because one day when I do start going down to my uh, I mean semi-local arm wrestling club I don't want to be the guy that's just doing fucking wrist curls into a dude who's you know got his shoulder bicep elbow wrist fingers all connected so and obviously these people will still have far better central nervous system efficiency than I because I just don't have any table time but the more I can kind of emulate that, I think the better. So I'm going to start trying to add some sort of, uh, so, and you, you'll see on my left side, I, I, I go even cr a bit more, I, like I totally get rid of the standardization and I just kind of start freestyling it a little bit. And I might start doing this. I might start doing a set of freestyle arm wrestling of sorts after my standardized work in order to, again, uh, emulate the actual kind of, the motions of arm wrestling and this felt good it just it felt right it felt kind of uh using the whole body as a whole as you do in arm wrestling um yeah so i'm kind of rambling on here but yeah i need to start i need to start using more compound arm wrestling movements in order to get the body working as a whole And there's another, I'm going to start making, there's two more tools. So I made that new tool today. Well, it wasn't, really didn't make it. I just bought a handle and put a fat grip on it. And then I made this new tool today. Rather than using the car seat belt that would dig into my hand, I started using a karate belt. And this felt way, 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 way better. So this was really good. Um, and again, I'm doing sort of that freestyle stuff. And I might just start doing it with the right arm because that's the, that's the where I'm more focused on. I don't really care too much for the left as much. So I started just kind of just fucking around and doing freestyle. So this is hook freestyle now. So, you know, I do a sort of a, I start with a sort of a dragging and then I go to a side pressure and then you know, I go to a bit of a press and then I go to a full flop rip, flop wrist press. So kind of trying, doing every single variation of the hook whilst getting the whole body involved, bicep, elbow, whilst also training the wrist and stuff. And, then, and now my hands starting to totally go so I just do some some flop wrist press. So yeah, I might start uh, start implementing more of this into my training. Now I'm doing my back pressure. Today I only got two reps on 25 kilos. Uh, last time I did this, I got three. So 
Again, feeling pretty weak today. Not feeling it. You can probably hear it in my voice. I mean, maybe I'm getting sick. I don't know. But um, yeah, I wasn't fully feeling it. And then I try to get a single rep on my left. And I, you can see me trying to standardize it here. I'm doing kind of like a surfer's shaka bra fucking thing where I, I go from thumb to pinky and that's the range of motion. And that way it stays exactly the same over time. And that's, and that's what was my original point when I was saying before. It's hard to standardize arm wrestling lifts because we're so new to it. And there's no machines either, unfortunately, really for it. Um, so you have to figure out creative ways of keeping it consistent. And then I did, I was supposed to do five by five here, but I could barely get four reps. So that was a, that was a four rep max. So yeah, I was feeling weak today. And then I moved on lastly to some reverse forearm curls to get those brachyradialis and extensors really popping. Um, and this is really important also for just general elbow health and, and wrist health. If you are doing all this flexion work, but no extension work, you're going to run into issues. You will run into overuse injuries like tennis elbow or you know, potential um, RSI or uh, uh, what's that thing that people get when they're at the computer all the time, carpal tunnel. So you want to open up the fingers, you want to reverse the wrist because otherwise you will get overused. And then on top of that, the extensors take up half of the forearm. So if you have these huge flexors, but no extensors, like I did for years, you'll have a very underdeveloped forearm. So highly suggest getting these done at the end of your arm wrestling days or forearm days. Or again, if you guys are out there and you don't give a shit about arm wrestling, but you want big forearms, do arm wrestling variations. It doesn't have, you don't have to do the side pressure. I mean, that shit's entirely, you don't need to do that. Even if you are into arm wrestling, a lot of you guys don't need to do that. I just do it because I've got very small hands, but I wouldn't suggest it for most people. Now I'm doing sort of some Tom Blatt schizo reps. And that's it. That's uh, that's today's session. Sorry about not recording my accessory day, but you know mistakes sometimes are made. Anyway, see you guys for more piss and vinegar tomorrow. Bye bye.